Put in your headphones. It's about to get busy. Um, first initial sort of inspiration. Uh, I think that's super, super easy, and it's a guy from England. His name is Lawrence Cottle. Anybody heard of this guy? Um, his name is Lawrence Cottle. He's a fantastic electric bass player. I went to see him play at the Gun Tavern in Croydon on Sunday. And on the Monday, I went out and bought my first bass, and that was it. And he lived five minutes away from me, and he took me to every gig and everything he played for about two years straight. And I recorded it all on a little tape player, and would come home after every gig every night and transcribe it all and learn it note for note. I thought I was really good. Everyone used to ask me, how do you play, man? I played with Lawrence Cobb. Of course, I didn't play anything near like him, but he was definitely my initial inspiration, and still is to this day, just to keep in touch with him. So, what's your first? No, I started playing drums when I was 11 years old, and then I started classical guitar for seven years. And in amongst all that, I uh, studied the French horn very, very briefly, and uh, more recently the trumpet and obviously the piano over the last 10 years or so. Not really studying the piano for me, just I tra when I transcribe solos, I transcribe everything to the piano in order to teach myself how to play. You know, it, it kind of worked because I play the piano pretty good, and basically everything, pretty much everything I can do on a bass, I can do it at the piano. And it's really useful for like arranging gigs and when I'm in the studio producing records, which is another thing that I'm really into and I do a lot of. Um, it's pretty useful. And when I went to Berkeley, I made a bunch of bread by playing a lot of piano trio gigs in my, in my first year that I was there, randomly enough. Is that how you've done it all, just yeah. transcribing? There, there, was no ma there was no magic little thing that a teacher told me, oh, you do this, 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 and this, and then it's all going to work. No, I mean, you didn't just like go and write woodshed scales and kind of get into those and stuff. No, I have I have exercises which I use, which happen to be scales and arpeggios and all that stuff to get my technique in shape. I run them every day if I can, you know. You know, just to cover the instrument and to get around the instrument and keep it in tune and keep. Make sure the third and fourth finger are working really well on the left hand. All kind of silly things, you know, that you can pick up anywhere. I just took a hand and it's called a hand of virtuoso pianist. It's a piano uh, scale and arpeggio book, and I just like took a bunch of things that I felt really helped my technique out of that book and then with a metronome from 40 BPM to 400 every day for about three or four hours. That was my technique like this routine. And 40 BPM is like a few more percentage. 400, you know, basically don't hear the notes anymore. And making sure we're really conscious of each level of taking the measure arm up and super even and super clean. Which is maybe not what you're ultimately going for. Maybe a musical idea isn't completely clean. But if your technique is such that you can execute anything, you can sure as hell execute something slow if you want it to be slow. And there's just no, there's no, this bridge is like permanently between the brain and, and the music. So the way I practice at home is just to have the iTunes on random. And just just hit it, you know, like, until I find something that inspires me and then get into it. And it might be two notes, might be a whole song that I want to learn, maybe a phrase of a solo. I, I can take two notes and practice for an hour with them, you know what I mean? If I hear this, um, if I hear that on a solo, oh man, there's so much you can do. But in context, maybe like, um, some intense periods of shedding, like the day I picked up the bass, it started. 
9 and 10, 11 hours as much as I could cram in. I mean, we'd come home from gigs together and I'd be like, oh, I've got to play, got to play, got to play. So he'd very me end up in his bedroom and just like jamming all the time. And that, 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 to get to where the technique is fluid enough so that you can execute your ideas without, um, without your technique getting in the way, you've got to go through a somewhat of an intense period of, of shedding, I think. Um, for me anyway, for the kind of stuff I play and you know, for that fast stuff, nonsense. Try and slow it all down now and forget about it all. But yeah, a lot, a lot of practice. And does it affect my social life? Um, no. And I mean that quite seriously because one of the things I strive for almost as much as being a great musician is to have a, a balanced life. And I think that's super important. And it doesn't always work. Right now it's not working for me. Um, but there are plenty of good times where it does. And on the whole, it's, it does work very well. If someone gives you a hard time about practicing and not going out, it's not a bad thing. When you're a headliner, like Shepherd's Bush Empire next week or something, and they're like, sitting at home with a glass of milk. What was, what's, what, what was like your first approach to playing like changes? Like sewing or First the approach to playing changes is just badly. Yeah. Um, firing away and not really hitting too much initially, um, as I think everyone kind of does stumbles into it. Um, the, the importance of transcription was stressed to me from a very early age. Well, not early age, but early on in my bass playing and in wanting to be an improvising musician. So, um, so that's always good, you know, I'll show you this, because I've never go anywhere without at least a couple of these books. And basically, this is kind of a new one, so it's not so full. But I just go and transcribe tons of solos and write them all down. It's like Matheny solos and Michael Becker solos and Bill Frizzell solos and Sonny Rollins and Clifford Brown, all kind of great jazz improvising artists. And I do this all the time, at least. I mean, there was a stage where I didn't have any gigs in July, I think it was. Didn't have too many gigs, so I was doing like one a day. And I kind of filled up half a book in a month, which was great. And then spent the next month kind of like digging back into certain phrases that I wanted to check out. And, uh, me and Stern called call these the, the, the scrolls of knowledge, which is basically what they are. And we fill them up and we go and dig back into them and hopefully get re-inspired by what we transcribe and <coughs> find something new within it or get bored of it and be inspired to transcribe something else. These books like this I have maybe um, 20, 30 of these books full of stuff that I've been working on over the last eight years, and ten years, whatever it's been. And always two or three travel with me at all times. Yes? Uh, yeah, what do you sing when you play? Why do I sing? Yeah. Because as guitar players and bass players and piano players and drummers, we can play constantly without taking a breath. I could sit in for the next hour going, and then it gets super boring. But I couldn't sing that, you know what I mean? So the singing along with what you're playing helps your phrasing, because at some point you have to breathe. So you, you tend to play in a lot more concise and melodic phrases. And also the fact that when I'm playing or, or when any, when any um, it's not stupid when any great improviser, not when a great improviser, but when any great improviser is playing, that what's coming from their head is like it's, they're thinking about it before it comes out here. It's momentarily, but it's that transition of coming from the brain to the instrument, and that just connects it a little bit, a little bit more. And obviously, I got it from Benson, classic on all this stuff, and a ton of other of uh, his solos. You know, he sings along to all of this stuff with a serious R&B voice. I don't ever pretend to actually sing exactly what I'm playing. But I'm definitely, I'm kind of close. And I have to breathe at some point in there. So it wasn't actually a lot of breathing in that little thing. But just making like when I started playing the blues. Brazilian people, 
And so, yeah, I do. I really dig into it. Um, I don't think it's ever been really like one thing at the same time because my mind is a little bit crazy.